Welcome to another race analysis from stage one, day one of Tulsa Tough. Yeah, day one. Day one of Tulsa Tough. This is the Blue Dome Criterium, and I have with me Cliff Bar Racing and Trainer Roads, Pete Morris. How's it going, guys? Hey, Pete, I want you to tell me, with this race, if, I w if you were playing me in a video game, how would you have won this race? What are the things you would have done? Man, um, I think uh, watching this race back, one of the things you did a really good job with was breaking down the lines and deciding when to spend some energy, when not to spend some energy, and exploring the course as a whole. And we actually did a really good job breaking that down in our other video. If we do say so ourselves. I mean, yeah. pat ourselves on the back <laughs> since we're here. Um, but yeah, we talked a lot about line choice and, and what that means for a course and a technical course and why that's important. But I think that's kind of a separate uh, a separate discussion than how do we make John win this race, mm. right? Yes, exactly. So uh, what we'll do in this one is is look at different points throughout the race and, and we'll just kind of point out things that maybe I did well or things that you kind of overall principles that you mm -hmm. feel like we can glean from this one. And hopefully you can use it in your next race when things feel chaotic and crazy and scary like they did for me and you can uh, maybe rise above that chaos and be successful. Yeah, pulling yourself out of the scary, dangerous, technical situations um, on the fly is extremely difficult, but we're gonna try to yeah. uh, do what we can. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so we're gonna jump in kind of only three minutes into the race, and actually I had just walked over and I was watching this race from the sidelines, so I got to see a slightly different perspective, but this is right when I walked up and I saw John making kind of this smart move through the technical, technical couple corners where he has a free line to make it up to the split. Um, and honestly, this course always feels like it's splitting up a little bit, right? It does. It's kind of, bunching and splitting. Bunching yeah, bunching and splitting. and splitting. And riders are always kind of um, getting a free ride off the front, not because they did anything special, but because the group is, is bunching up behind them and no one wants to do anything. And so as you watch John just do that, he had a perfect line. He didn't have to put out that much energy. And as he had kind of the full course at his disposal, you watched him do a lot with not much power and with the lines and everything. And so the problem is, is if you're halfway back in the field, you kind of don't have those opportunities the same way to explore and, and put, out, put down extra power to get something across or to kind of sneak off the front. Um, and so kind of after those first couple splits, it feels to me like you kind of decided to settle in and we had a plan that you were gonna sprint we were just going to go for the sprint, kind of the long sprint and a positioning in the last lap. And so you kind of reined it in thinking you would save some energy and you'll be there at the end and we'll make it happen. Right. And it honestly kind of bit me. So because I found myself then just getting washed back and losing position constantly because this race was, like I said, in, you can even see it there into that turn. Like there's really no reason to slow down in any of these turns, but particularly in this section, there's no reason to slow down at all carry that speed through, go quick, but that's not what was happening. So as a result, it would get really wide, it would slow up. That line that you had your eye on is suddenly not okay anymore because there's riders there. And you can't really just position yourself wherever you want because you'll cause crashes. So I found myself in spots where I was like, hang on, like I didn't picture myself being this far back. Mm -hmm. And it just would kind of happen. And then I'd have to fight for that position again uh, and, and kind of work my way back up. And, and in technical courses like that, or I mean, this was a big race. There was 125 guys or 140 yeah. guys or something. Tons. Uh, that's a big race. And having that many people um, to make mistakes at like a basic level, you can lose position much quicker than you can gain position. Yes. So you're always kind of getting filtered backwards because the fitness is there. There's a lot of, a lot of guys and the course is kind of really corralling what you're capable of doing. Mm -hmm. um, and so, once you're in back in the wash, it's difficult back here. Like this is a good look, example. Look at right there, slowing down a bunch. We're stuck. We're going 23 when we should be going 30, mm -hmm. here, right? And you have no options. Yeah. None. There's you're just, just there. To go. Um, so right here, I tried to move up and snag a, a few spots, but do so safely. I didn't want to, you know, push somebody out or dive bomb them on the inside. Mm -hmm. And and so this is a good example right here. Uh, this is going to happen a lot over the course of this race, where you're going to have to take an inopportune line and you're going to have to get back in to what the right line should be. Mm -hmm. And um, this is something that's that's hard to think about on the fly, but what, since we're watching a video, it's pretty easy. <laughs> yeah. um, but one of the things you really have to think about is while you're making passes or you're moving up in, an, in the not optimal line, you're going to have to slot back in somewhere, 
mm-hmm. always, right? You can't you can't just ride out in the wind. You can't take the inopportune line all the time, or that's when you last five or ten minutes out of a race. Or you go off course. Or you, correct. <laughs> <laughs> that's what the fencing is for. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so one of the things you have to think about is while you're committing to your move up, you also have to be thinking about when you are going to slot back in and where. Um, and there's a lot more, uh, there's safe places to do it, there's dangerous places to do it, and there's people who, will let, who are more likely to let you in and less likely to let you in. So one of the things you really have to think about during all of these inopportune passes and when you're offline is that you need to figure out where you're going to get back into position when you deviate off the line and take an inside line or slot out and slot back in. And uh, this is gonna be a good example where All of a sudden, there's an opportunity. So John finds the left side. He knows he can make some passes, but he has to slot back in. And he does a pretty good job, but I would have probably... Back up to 800 watts out of that turn to make up for it, right? Right. And and this is early enough in the race that people are still fighting for position and stuff like that. But what you have to do is when you decide to slot out and take an inside line, know then and there that you're going to have to get back in. Mm -hmm. And it's possible that the the cost of slotting back in is not going to be worth the move up that you get right then and there, even though the opportunity presents itself. And it's it's really difficult to assess on the fly about where you can get back in. But what you can kind of do is pick the three or four riders ahead and pick the spot you're going to go to. You're going to pick your finish line with the slot out. So like that rider, I'm going to go in and I'm going to make it to behind him. Yep, behind him or in front of him. Because generally speaking, if you can get your bars in front of someone, you're going to have an easier time getting in, and then you're less susceptible to him messing up or him breaking or anything like that. So it's really important to pick where you're going to get back in after making an effort. Um, Because if you're not going to do that, sometimes that's the head of the race. Sometimes you know you have to make it all the way to the front of the race in front of everybody, and that's the only safe way you're going to get through the corner. And if that's the kind of the dice you're going to roll, you better put a lot of effort into making it to the front of the race. Or maybe it's not worth it then and there. Maybe there's another opportunity where there's, it's going to be less guys to pass or, or yeah. an easier spot to hop back in. And knowing that even though an opportunity presents itself, sometimes it's not worth it based on the things you're going to have to do after the fact hmm. is a really challenging thing to think about. And that's why you're always pay, paying attention to three or four or five riders up or ten riders up but every time you have to pick where you're going to get back in yeah. when you start the move. So another way to say that is when you have opportunities that present themselves on the race course, you have to think of the conclusion of that opportunity and the implications before you commit to it. Uh, Cause really, otherwise that's kind of how those dangerous situations happen where it causes a lot of crashes. Yep, absolutely. So now we're a little bit further into the race and I've figured out lines. Once again, check out that other video for the walkthrough on how we broke down the course and looked at the different lines. And as you can see here, I'm moving up. I've figured out some lines, some cheat codes, so to speak, where I can move past the field. Uh, Pete, let's go back to that original question. If I was a video game character, now that I have things figured out, what would you have done with me, the character, uh, in order to increase my chances at winning? Yeah, and I think that's a great, so we can, we can break down small, small improvements, but there's an overall thing that I think I, we would have changed very basically in this race for John. So John's lines are pretty exceptional, um, and his fitness is right there. Like, I, I, as you can, John's here, how hard was the race while you were in it? It wasn't that hard. It was mentally hard because it was like, oh, my gosh, I feel like I'm going to die all the time. But it wasn't physically hard. Mm -hmm. My heart rate's pretty high in this race, but that's because it was a heat index of like 107. (laughs) So (laughs) that's going to happen. Yeah. And so I think based off of John's skills and what he's good at, um, we kind of have to enable him to to capitalize on those. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Uh, And so what what I probably would have done is probably for a third of the race, you were close enough to the front that it was just strung out single file and there was only 15 guys ahead of you. And it was much less fatiguing mentally, mm-hmm. right? Yes. But it did it did come at an energy cost. Like you did have to work harder. You did have to kind of shut down little gaps and deal with accelerations a little more. Um, but to me, on this course with this field and your skill set, I would have 100% spent extra energy to be in the, in the front, say, 10, 15, 20 guys, and even the third, uh, as soon as you're in the, as soon as you're in a position where it can bunch up around you, you're going to, you're going to uh, have problems yeah. because you're not in control of that anymore. So you'd be okay with spending that extra energy that you might have to do when you maybe find yourself at the front 
or you go to the front just to have a faster line and to not get boxed in just because of the fact that I could probably absorb those sort of efforts and then it would just give me better chances. Yep, and, and a lot of those opportunities, um, you don't have them back here. So there's a lot of things that maybe would have shaken out different. Maybe if there's a bunch of moves going off the front and it's really easy for you to follow those moves, um, all of a sudden you're in a way simpler situation. Even though you're working harder, you're only worrying about three or four guys and every time you come back to the pack, you know that the pack is coming and so you can kind of re-accelerate back in um, and hold position. And I think it's really, on a, most technical courses like this, it's almost always worth spending extra energy to be at the front, even if you might not make it to the end. It's, it's uh, half of one, six of the other, but sure. I would always spend extra energy and be there at the end and not be able to sprint yep. rather than save as much be able to uncork this monster sprint, but be in 50th wheel. Sure, especially in a race like this, right? I wanna take a quick moment and talk about the battles that you can find yourself in in races and how it can make you lose focus on the war. <laughs> and it can be so frustrating because you'll you'll notice a lot of what, you, what will feel like unsafe or strange or erratic riding, but many times you'll find yourself then eventually you get so focused on that very thing right in front of you that you start doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And, you, and you, you don't outthink it, and you don't play chess when everyone else is playing checkers and you find yourself just caught in that battle. Because I found myself there, and there were definitely some dangerous position or dangerous situations. Um, let's, let's go to some of those dangerous positions, and then let's talk about how to recover from those. Yep. Okay, so you've probably seen a lot of what seems like scary uh, things going on already in this field. But here, the field does this normal thing that it would do where it would fan out and I'd try to find a line, but try to be safe and not cut everybody off. And then uh, riders dive in there. I get kind of stuck. And then this rider here, you'll see, oh, caught on me and he crashes. Now it looks totally chill from here, but I spent about three seconds pedaling as hard as I could and trying to stay up as hard as I could and not coast because there was a human falling on my bike. <laughs> and there were already so many scary things. And then that happened. I heard his bike just scraping and his body scraping across the pavement and it full on spooked me. And there were a lot of things already that were kind of like, whoa, this is, this is crazy. And even right there, a guy cut in, I was getting pretty scared. And you'll notice that after this, the, la the next lap or two, I lose a ton of positions because I'm just, I'm just like, okay, just be okay and stay here. Yeah. Just don't die. That's yeah, just like, don't die. And, and when you think of that, then you end up not riding, looking ahead and racing ahead and you end up moving backward. So Pete, how do you rebound from something like that? And mentally, like, like how do you recommit yourself or what things do you focus on in the race to get yourself back into the game? Uh, man, it, it's really hard. And, and as you know, you just experienced it and it can be anything from a crash. It can be someone who's purposely fighting you for every wheel, corner after corner after corner. Um, it can be, oh man, anything like the race is not, is out of your control. I think that's a really good way to think about it is if you don't feel like you're in control of your race or the race, and you're just kind of along for the ride. Um, it's really important to kind of not sit back. Uh, that's a bad way to put it, but you have to kind of pick a new focus right away. That's something easy and something you can do. That's like, okay, I'm going to nail the next two lines not necessarily depending on what the pack is doing, but I'm going to take outside, outside, and at, or outside, inside, and that I'm going to be in control of that. And that's a small thing I can do. And as you kind of make those really small check boxes, um, you'll kind of bring your confidence back and remember that the reason you're there is to race and to um, kind of capitalize on what you know you should be doing. But if you're just worried um, or you're fighting with someone specifically or it feels like the cor you're just not riding the course correctly, um, there's some you have to pick something super small. And sometimes, honestly, it's as easy as I'm going to follow this one rider ahead of me and that's it. I'm not going to worry about anything else. I'm just going to follow this rider for a lap and stick on his wheel. And sometimes that's all it takes to bring you back to life and say, OK, I did that. Let's move up one spot and do it again. Let's move up three spots and do it again. Um, but until you get a small success, you're just going to be floundering and like yes. everything feels like it's out of control. And if you just wait for it to dissipate, it might after time, but you've already lost a ton of positions. So proactively finding those things that, okay, refocus, what am I going to do well for the next little, for the next turn, for the next lap, for the, whatever it is, 
it can it, I should have been doing that in this race. Um, let's see a couple other sketchy things, then let's look at the finish on this one. Let's do it. So now the race looks really different, right? Because it's just slimmed out here. It's just a few riders and there's riders up ahead of us, but not much. But I finally pulled myself out of the hole. I started to focus on my lines and execute my lines. And then I started to move up. Uh, so it was working. Yep. And, but I had this great opportunity here to basically just keep going. Because at this point I could physically, it was a hard effort what I did before, but I could have kept going. But I slowed up and I was like, I'll let everybody else do this work. Mm -hmm. I really shouldn't have done that because not only did it that I could have kept going, but it also brings up dangerous situations like right here. You'll see I'm a, oh gosh. So doesn't look bad, but my front wheel, my front, the front end of my bike was literally hopping goof, 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 goof up and down because the, my tire was off the ground and being lifted up by that. It's so scary. It's ex <laughs> bike contact is scary. <laughs> yes. let's, let's just call it what <laughs> <Yes>. it is. <laughs> yeah. Especially when you're not expecting them to just like, fully cut across for no reason like that. But you know, that that's what happens. And then after this, I kind of, it, the same thing happened again. I'm on the inside here, but you'll see, I bleed like I bleed speed in the coming turns and the coming laps. You can watch the full race video to see. And oh, it just kind of re put me into that place where I was scared again and not moving forward. And uh, I think this is a good example of, it's something probably everybody could do a better job, even myself. Um, when you do have the opportunity to kind of take a breath, like you were off the front, you had to make a decision then and there whether you were gonna chase or look behind and see how far everybody is. And one of the things that I think everybody can do is you can take one deep breath and think about it. You actually, you finally have an opportunity to think. And yeah, if the bridge is getting out of uh, too far away, it is what it is, but there's very few opportunities in a race where you get one deep breath and you're gonna have a solid decision and decide. So mm -hmm. one of the things that is, if you are going to drop back into the field, one of the things I think everybody should do, and it, it makes for a much safer race, is take that deep breath, start pedaling easy for a couple pedal strokes, and then re-accelerate preemptively before the field catches you, because then you won't have that speed differential where anybody has to make kind of a crazy move to get around you. People, the, the, everybody's seen the moves <laughs> where someone's coming backwards, people are going forwards, and something bad happens. Yeah. Um, and you oh, have, oh gosh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. see, it's, I mean, it's all the time. Yeah. And so one of the things you can do is finally, when you do have that opportunity, even if you're pulling out, if, if you're in a breakaway and you're pulling out, um, there's always a chance to reaccelerate, to kind of mitigate the circumstances. Yeah. And it's such a small effort to just go back to what the speed of the race is. I mean, it would have taken three or four seconds at 500 Watts. And then I would have been safe and, and you would have probably had good lines for the next turn good lines you would have position. maintained position yep. you would you would have been back at 15 wheels and yep. you wouldn't have been spooked yep. and maybe the race would have shaken out differently yeah also like i shouldn't look to the field to give me anything because at this point i'm terrified of the field mm -hmm. so like you know I, I should just be thinking about what can i do to control and what can or what can i control and focusing on that so yeah big learning opportunity that i had oh yikes uh big learning opportunity that i had there uh, let's watch the final bit of the race yeah let's do it so at this point I was starting to rebound again. The thought came into my mind, like, just drop out, man. This is crazy. You have mountain bike nationals coming up. And I was like, no, like <laughs> I want to win. But uh, I had figured out the lines and now I'm, I'm executing and I'm putting them in place. So you can see right here, I'm pushing myself wide, carrying momentum into the turn at 400 Watts going into the turn because I knew that I could make up some positions here. Yeah, and look at those positions just slotting by you. Yep. And I'm not doing a really hard effort there. And then right here, once again, I know that I need to make up some spots there. So I roll through and I'm close to the front of the race. Like, I feel like I'm like, okay, this is where I need to be. I bled some speed in that turn. That was bad, but I, I feel like I'm, I'm kind of where I need to be. Mm -hmm. right? So maybe I've recovered and this is really getting into, I believe the final couple laps basically that we're going to have, uh, coming up here. And, and I think this is one thing that, um, it's really hard to do on the fly, but sometimes you have to reassess what your race goal is in the race. Mm. And I know personally, I've had the experience where the race does not feel like a race that I want to go corner to corner to corner <laughs> in the sprint at the last five laps. And to me, this race sort of feels that way. Where, <laughs> where, and, or yeah. maybe, maybe I actually don't want to do that. And maybe I start looking for a late race move because I'm definitely not going to put it on the line for the last few corners. Mm -hmm. And so you were close enough to the front and you had the fitness, 
right here, it would have been really hard to do to change your whole mental space, but just be like, I'm going to attack. Yeah, I'm going I'm to get off the front. Because if you, whoa, yikes. Um, if you look here, I'm using my lines, but I'm still so far back. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going to be able to get to the front to be able to sprint. Like, I would have been, uh, you know, I would have been sprinting for peanuts, not mm -hmm. actually for the win. So, because I'm far back, look, I'm putting in a big effort, and suddenly that move to move up when you're this far back, it doesn't do a whole lot, right? But that said, I'm trying to position myself in good spots, right? Um, I come in here, Sounds I keep good. the gas yeah. on, pedaled through that turn, was able to took ownership of the inside line, which was good because I was not doing that a whole lot. But right here, I should have been working my way to the inside and I should have been absolutely hammering it coming up, even though this isn't the final lap, it's just coming into one to go. But I should have been fighting to get up to the top 10, top five wheels right now, like it was the end of the race. Yep. And because I didn't, I found myself here and I thought, okay, everybody on the inside, please move up so then I can move up <laughs> selfishly. <laughs> And it didn't happen and it got kind of blocked and it slowed down. And suddenly I was like, oh no, I'm on the outside. And sure enough, what happens last lap, bad position, the crash. Gosh dang it. I know. It even snapped the GoPro <laughs> mount off. Um, so uh, let's rewind and let's look at that crash in some slow motion to kind of try to figure it out here. So once again, I'm to the outside where I don't want to be mm -hmm. and I, can see once we get into this turn, there's a rider that goes around the outside and he cuts in really hard right there. Yep. And that causes people to move inside and bump bars. And right here, I figured that a crash was coming and let's pause right here. <laughs> so I knew the crash was coming. I could see it happening right in front of me. And there's this rider in what looks like a German jersey, I think, uh, the yellow, black, and, and red jersey to my right. And my thought is, okay, I'm gonna cut underneath him. Mm-hmm. And if I can cut underneath him, I can dodge the crash. Right. And in my mind, in this millisecond, I'm like, and that's fantastic. It's going to thin the field. <laughs> I'm going uh, <laughs> to do even better now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, but little did I know that the rider in front of him in the blue shorts with the orange shoes and kind of like the pinkish jersey uh, was also going to be implicated in this crash. You can see I can't cut underneath. There's no way. They're not, they're not moving ahead like I thought, and I'm not able to slow down. And I see these riders are absolutely going down. And once I see that rider with the pink jersey start to lose his wheel here, I was like, I'm crashing. There's no way I'm getting through this. So I made the decision. I thought, do I try to like stay upright and bunny hop and get over? But once I saw him hitting the ground and drifting in front of me, I thought, no way, I'm not gonna be able to do that. I'll just land on other wheels and crash. Mm -hmm. I decided to lock up my rear brake and try to low side it. And of course the, the whole thing happens. And we can cut now to the footage. Hopefully we can use some of the footage here that you can see of the race. Uh, let's uh, go to that. So here's a replay at full speed. Yikes. Oh, chaos. Uh, so, and here's a, a better replay of it. You'll be able to see. I came in and I thought, oh yeah, maybe I can lock it. Maybe I can go over it, but just low slid, low, decided to low side it and just slide it in and got out okay. I mean, road rash, but okay. Yeah, that's the safe way to do it. Um... Bunny hopping crashes is high risk. <laughs> yes, it is. It doesn't pay off for everybody. No. <laughs> That's for sure. So, I mean, overall, it's a super disappointing way to finish the race, for sure, because yeah. I was hoping to do really well and definitely wasn't hoping to crash, particularly with nationals so close. But, uh, man, a lot of learnings from this one. Thanks for breaking it down for me, Pete. Of course. I'm, I'm glad, like I said, I'm glad you got to do it and experience it and feel what it's like. Yeah, I can't wait to go back and to do it when I don't have nationals right after as well. That'll, you know, free me up maybe a bit and hopefully be a better racer as well. So uh, if you saw things that you think I should have done better, or if you were watching the live broadcast and you were trying to send me those things and I didn't get them then, you can send them to me now. You can just do it right now down in the YouTube comments below. And if you like the video, you should give it a thumbs up. Uh, and yeah, just let us know what you want to see next. We have a lot of different race footage coming and it's going to be exciting. Can't wait. Thanks, Pete. Yeah, of course.